Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to have a look at using a slider. At the start of the DSLR revolution, the slider was the go-to tool for small creators to bring the Hollywood movement to their projects. In 2020, I would say they've become somewhat obsolete and primarily for two reasons. The first, the gimbal. Uh, back when sliders were first mass produced for DSLRs, they were going to be costing $400 to $500 at a base package. Now you can pick up a slider for $50 on Amazon, which is bewildering in itself. But a lower priced gimbal is going to cost the same as a higher priced slider. And if you're going to choose between traveling one meter versus a dozen, obviously the gimbal is going to be the better choice. The second reason is in-camera stabilization, which has grown tremendously since 2010 couple that with lens stabilization and then film in a higher frame rate to be slowed down and then stabilized in post you're gonna have a pretty stable shot however I would still argue that the slider can be put to good use in 2020 let's take a look while sliders may be clunky and heavy I do find they hold unique advantages over gimbals and stabilizers with small bonuses such as quick setup time and no need to rebalance if you switch lenses but more predominantly the classic nature of the track forward that just isn't prevalent with footage captured with gimbals. I think there's a stern difference between a tracking shot and footage filmed on a gimbal. But for me, one of the primary selling points is focus. Of course, you can set autofocus on a gimbal or have someone wirelessly pull focus. But if you're working as a one man band like I often do and need precise focus pulling, I'm not getting that from autofocus and a gimbal. With a slider, you can track forward focus pull and maintain perfect focus in doing so with no visible focus breathing which is often apparent with autofocus or at the very least no visible delay or if you're using a gimbal and you only have a manual lens well you're just going to have to shoot with a narrow aperture to keep a deep depth of field with a slider you can rack focus to your heart's content i think one of my favorite techniques on a slider is to not only shoot with a wide aperture and rack focus throughout the entire scene but to also pan while tracking to create a really diverse sense of movement even if your slider is short in length. Because DSLR and mirrorless sliders are often short in length, a difficulty that many run into is promoting a sense of movement because, well, it's a meter long, it's hardly gonna be that visually impactful, especially in a large and open landscape like this. So there are two things that you can do to help promote a greater sense of movement. The first, bring your camera and your tripod down low. The second, foreground interest. When using a slider with your tripod fully extended, in large open spaces, you're going to run into trouble conveying movement because of the relative distance of the background to the camera. As you can see in my example, even though I'm tracking backwards, it doesn't necessarily promote a sense of dynamic movement. However, bring the camera down low and we suddenly have a greater visual dynamic with the short length of movement. But let's stop. What's one thing I've done differently to the prior shot? Well, we're not moving forward along the z-axis, but across the x-axis. And this is because with a short slider, moving right or left is always going to create visible movement better than moving forward or backward. Outside of that, how can you use the slider to track forward then, but still create a solid sense of movement outdoors? Well, as I said earlier, you're going to want to include foreground objects. Just like how we visually find it more difficult to recognize movement coming towards us versus movement coming across to us, the inherent motion of tracking forward over a short distance won't be that great, unless you can include foreground elements. For example, take these two shots of the camera moving away from the gate. Being so far away, the track backward is not that apparent. Yet when I bring myself closer, you can now see new elements come into or out of the frame, which makes the movement more apparent. Look for trees, rocks, and greenery to help promote this. So even if you get down low, your foreground elements within your composition, you're not finding that there's a perceived sense of movement within your shot. It's likely to do with one factor and perhaps the most important for creating a sense of movement with a short slider, and that is focal length. While indoors, sliders can easily convey a sense of movement due to the proximity of objects and their comparative distance between each other. Outdoors, depending on your focal length, not so much. The main issue derives from the lack of visible displacement between objects, also known as parallax. The most common example of a visual parallax is that of a train window watching the mountains slowly move by in the background while trees and buildings rush by in the foreground. Your focal length will directly affect this. Take the following four shots. 16mm, 24 50 and 70mm. Each shot was filmed from the same position but of course at different focal lengths. 
With each focal increment, as we are compressing the distance between ourselves and the landscape in focus, as a result, we start to lose the perceived amount of motion between. As we lose the objects closer to us, we don't feel as if we're moving that far. So remember the wider the focal length, the more apparent movement will be. Okay guys, that is another tutorial down for myself. Hopefully you'll see that there is some benefit in owning a slider in 2020, even if it is just a meter in length. I will catch you guys next time with a different tutorial. And uh, now I've got to try and find my way down off this valley. Catch you guys next time.